Hello everyone, today let's take a look at the transverse section through the middle of the forearm. This section is taken midway between the elbow and wrist joints, allowing us to clearly observe the compartments of the forearm. Starting on the medial side, just beneath the skin, we can identify the basilic vein, a prominent superficial vein. Now if you observe the section closely, you'll see the two bones, the ulna on the medial side and the radius on the lateral side. Between them lies the interosseous membrane, which firmly connects the two bones. Remember, the thumb represents the lateral aspect, while the little finger marks the medial aspect. The forearm is divided into two main compartments, the anterior flexor and the posterior extensor compartments. These are separated by septa derived from the deep fascia. Among them, the anterior compartment is noticeably bulkier than the posterior one. In this section, the deep layer of the anterior compartment shows two important muscles. Flexor digitorum profundus, located along the anterior surface of the ulna, and flexor pollicis longus which lies along the anterior surface of the radius. The pronator quadratus, another deep muscle of the forearm, is not visible here, as it is situated more distally near the wrist. Now let's move to the superficial layer. At this level, four superficial muscles can be identified. Let's name them from medial to lateral. Flexor carpi ulnaris, present along the ulnar side, Flexor digitorum superficialis, lying just above the profundus, the tendon of palmaris longus, and flexor carpi radialis on the lateral side. The pronator teres, though also a superficial muscle, is not visible here because this section is taken below its insertion. Next, just lateral to the flexor carpi radialis, we can identify a neurovascular bundle, which includes the radial artery and the superficial branch of the radial nerve, both lying underneath the brachioradialis muscle. The superficial branch of the radial nerve provides sensory supply to much of the dorsum of the hand. In the midline, sandwiched between the flexor digitorum superficialis and flexor digitorum profundus, we can spot the median nerve. On the medial side, deep to the flexor carpi ulnaris, runs the ulnar nerve. The ulnar nerve supplies the flexor carpi ulnaris and the medial half of the flexor digitorum profundus, while all other muscles in the anterior compartment of the forearm compartment are supplied by the median nerve and its deep branch, the anterior interosseous nerve. Close to the ulnar nerve, on its lateral side, we find the ulnar artery, which runs in relation to the flexor digitorum profundus. Both the radial and ulnar arteries are terminal branches of the brachial artery, providing the main arterial supply to the forearm. Now let's look at another important neurovascular bundle present in front of the interosseous membrane. This bundle contains the anterior interosseous nerve and the anterior interosseous artery. The anterior interosseous nerve is a deep branch of the median nerve. It supplies the deep muscles of the flexor compartment, except for the medial half of the flexor digitorum profundus, which as you know is supplied by the ulnar nerve. As the anterior interosseous artery travels downward, in the distal part of the forearm, it pierces the interosseous membrane to enter the extensor compartment where it joins the posterior interosseous circulation. Now let's move on to the posterior or extensor compartment. Among the deep muscles, two are seen closely related to the bones. The extensor pollicis longus, which lies adjacent to the ulna, and the abductor pollicis longus, which runs along the radius. Next, let's observe the superficial extensor group, arranged from lateral to medial, the brachioradialis forming the lateral boundary, 
The extensor carpi radialis longus, seen along the posterior surface of the radius, the extensor digitorum, the extensor digiti minimi, and finally the extensor carpi ulnaris, positioned next to the ulna. Between the superficial and deep muscle layers, there lies another neurovascular bundle, consisting of the posterior inner osseous nerve and its accompanying vessels. The posterior interosseous nerve, also known as the dorsal interosseous nerve, is the main nerve of the extensor compartment. It supplies most of the extensor muscles, except a few, namely the brachioradialis and extensor carpi radialis longus, which are supplied directly by the radial nerve. This nerve is actually the continuation of the deep branch of the radial nerve. Remember in the radial nerve divides into two terminal branches, the superficial branch, which is sensory, and the posterior inner osseous nerve, which is motor. And with that, we complete the demonstration of the transverse section of the forearm at its mid-level.